Hi everybody, it is uh, just a couple minutes after one on Friday. We made it to Friday and today we are reading chapters 9 and 10 from War Mage Unexpected. The, it's part of the Never Ending War series. I don't know if I ever mentioned that. Also, Sunday, the next War Mage book comes out. So you only have two days left before the next story begins. Uh, <clears throat> and we made it to Friday. Friday! Hope everyone's having a good day. It will be 97 degrees here, if they're at all right about the heat killing the virus. That may be good news for Texas. Hope everyone's having a good day. Um, it's the end of week six or seven. I swear, I cannot remember how long we've been in these little pods together. Um, hello, Diane. Hello, Nancy and Mike and Grace. Um, and I hope everyone is doing well. Let's get started. It's going to be um, chapter nine of War Mage Unexpected. William rubbed Teo behind a pointed ear as the beast snorted and hummed a melody. I don't know that one. I learned it from your father. His voice was low with perfect diction. Dad thinks he can carry a tune, he chuckled. All the dogs chime in, which only encourages him. Now the dragons. Okay, just chill out for a bit, Teo. We'll only be a few more minutes, as you wish. He left Teo and began climbing back up the tall hill. He cleared the crest of the hill and noticed the sun already halfway behind the horizon, beneath the horizon. We better start heading back, even when we're safely in the sky. I hate being out past sundown. But once he reached the top, his stomach sank. Raven, don't hide on me. He looked to his left and right, nothing. Not funny, Albie. He looked down the hill and saw her in the middle of the three dragons who were sizing her up. All the color drained from his face. Don't shout or you'll disturb them. Just get down there slowly and get between them, he thought. I'm coming, Raven, he said as calmly as he could. Raven waved her arm, signaling him to stop. He froze in shock. It's okay, she yelled, but he could see, but he could see she was breathing hard and her face was covered in sweat. Right? She was looking at the dragons around her and they were nodding in response. They aren't attacking her, he muttered. Every muscle in his body was tense and he took a few more steps, unsure, watching the dragon circle Raven. What have I done? He took a few more steps toward her, about to wave his arms in the air. Get ready to run, Raven. His breath caught in his throat. The female dragon leaned into Raven's face, almost knocking her over again. William raised his arms and let out a loud, hey! his eyes widening in horror. He started to run, but stopped when he saw that instead of trying to snatch Raven up in her jaws, the dragon nudged the girl's open hand with her nose. She placed her large jaws near Raven's ear. Sometimes when I dream, I can still feel the wind streaming past my wings. And if I reach out, I can touch the stars, whispered the dragon. Then I wake up and remember all over again where I am. Raven's eyes widened and she put her hands around the dragon's face. Her hands were dwarfed by the size of the dragon's head. You deserve to be free and choose your own destiny. We all do, she whispered back. William stood higher on the hill, baffled, his mouth agape, a chill run still running up his back. Things could change in any moment. They're listening to her, but how? She pointed to the pasture behind them and the dragons nodded and retreated, turning away from her and lumbering to their clans. William felt the relief flood through his body and he wanted to run and grab her even and carry her back up the hill but he felt his knees shaking and waited to steady himself. Raven started walking up to William and saw that he was standing there with his eyes wide. What? she asked, looking back over her shoulder and back at him. What do you mean, what? How? They, he sputtered. He was drenched in sweat. How did you do that? Raven looked back at the dragons retreating to another pasture. That was amazing, wasn't it? Her face lit up with delight. I've never felt like that before. I mean, spells are cool, but... These are feral animals. Do you understand? They don't listen to anybody. That's why they're here. Yeah, I know, and they listen to me. She walked past William as she ascended the hill, smiling till her face hurt, her eyes shining. William put his hands above his eyes to shade them, watching the dragons in the fading light. They had no reserved aggression. They weren't spooked or disturbed by Raven's presence. It was as if she was part of a clan, their clan. If anything, they are calmer. This doesn't happen, he muttered. You coming or what? I can't wait to tell Teo. I mean, I thought I got the whole dragons are wonderful thing, but wow, this is better than when I pulled off that spell. 
well, that what I'm not supposed to say, I even know, and could have really gone wrong. But I talked Grandpa into it, and to really wear him down, this is better. She kept talking excitedly the entire way up the hill and over the crest, the one good hand she had moving in every direction. The pain from her shoulder was momentarily forgotten. Uh, yeah. At the top of the hill, Raven ran to Teo and wrapped an arm partway around his neck, squeezing as she lay her head down. What's this? William looked at the ground while running his fingers through his hair, a confused look plastered on his face. No, they can't. Remember, they're here because... He paused again, looking back at the packs of beasts spread out in the valley. They don't listen to anybody. Maybe you're doing it wrong. I didn't have any problems with them. You're a riddle wrapped in an enigma inside of a girl can eat more than her body weight. That was one festival, and I won that pie eating contest. William paced around Teo, shaking his hands in the air. They didn't attack you. They weren't threatened by you. I don't get it. He stopped pacing, shaking his head again. This morning, you throw yourself into mortal combat with an elf who would have killed you for a goat, and you got the better of him. Today, you stood among feral dragons and let them blow steam into your face. I'll never forget this day. You're no normal mage, Raven, no matter what you say. Teo curled his long neck and looked back at Raven, smelling the air. That's just what those dragons were doing, said Raven. William looked at Teo. Dragons can take in things with their senses that we can't. He nodded at Teo. You and I are going to talk later, he said to Teo, puzzled. But right now, we have to go. The sun is falling below the horizon. It'll be dark before you know it. William held out his hand and helped Raven onto the dragon. She stepped onto the wing and swung her leg over the saddle, sliding forward to leave room for the rider. Get us home, Teo, ahead of the sunset. As you wish, hold on tight. They took off into the air, Teo spreading his silver wings, glittering against the last of the daylight. Raven let out a giggle as they rapidly climbed to soaring altitude and evened out. She stared down at the ranches below and the mountain range in the distance. Several lakes dotted the landscape with dense ancient forests that stretched out beyond the kingdom and were interrupted in sections by the wall. She looked out to the horizon and leaned forward, her left hand holding tight to the horn of the saddle. What's out there? What creatures? What other kingdoms? I've read about a few of them, but what is it really like? She shouted over the roar of the wind. More of the same, I guess. I've never flown up that far. Too much to do here. Her imagination raced as she looked down, taking in as many details as she could. William settled back into the saddle, pulling on the reins. What about the northwest route, Teo? It has the best views and should get us there just as fast. Raven gulped in the rushing air, her eyes watering as she looked up at the stars just appearing. She stretched out her left hand as far as she could, her fingers reaching for the stars, and felt a pang in her chest for the dragons she had left behind in the valley. Teo dipped his head and bent his left wing slightly, adjusting the flight and making a gradual turn to the right. Raven slipped to the side in the saddle, losing her footing in the stirrup. William suddenly slipped his arm around her waist, pulling her back up against him, pulling her back against him once again. I'm going to have to tie you to that saddle. What were you doing? Dreaming, she said, grabbing hold of the horn again. She looked back and smiled, turning back to face front in her seat to watch the vanishing landscape below. Just ahead of them, the ground rippled in a wide, straight line, puffs of dirt rising along a quarter-mile stretch. What was that? she shouted, but her words were swallowed up by the wind, and William was distracted by a crosswind, busy adjusting the reins. Raven looked back down, but the ground was still again, was still again, nothing. Optical illusion? She looked back toward the horizon, worried about getting home in time, when she saw another ripple. It was along the ground, far off in the distance, well within foreign lands. What the hell is that? Teo suddenly grunted, rearing back and nearly dropping Raven from the saddle. They bobbed left and right in a panic until William could calm him down and get him back on track. The moss ranch appeared over the horizon, the large dragons gathered in the center of the fields, huddling together for the night. Teo circled the largest open pen twice, lowering their altitude and coming in for landing as William held on to Raven one last time to keep her from lurching forward. He quickly threw his leg back and slid off the back, holding out his hand for Raven to dismount. Once Raven was safely on the ground, he marched to the front of the dragon near his eyes, his face drained of color. What happened up there, Teo? What did you see? Are there raiders? <clears throat> it wasn't what I saw, but what I smelled. Something isn't right with this day. 
The, dra <clears throat> the dragon folded his wings back by his side. The scales along the back of his neck, standing up on end as if ready for battle. You would be wise to keep watch, young William. Raven came up behind William, her eyes widening. It's the, William whipped around, angry. Don't say swarm. Don't ever say swarm, especially around any of the elders. There is no more swarm, and all you can do is remind people of the darkest days of this kingdom. Think, Raven. But I, she looked at his reddening face and quickly closed her mouth, giving him a short nod. William slid the saddle off Teo, and they silently walked back to the tackle room. At the door, William stopped and let out a sigh. Look, I'm sorry I snapped at you. Raven shook her head. It was me. I'm sorry. I didn't think about what it could be like for others. I'll be more careful. She pressed her palm to her chest, her fingers brushing against her mother's pin. Thank you for one of the best nights of my life. Dragons, she said in awe. William didn't respond, shaking his head to himself as he hung up the saddles. Her first ride. Connor sat at the kitchen table, sipping on a warm cup of tea and staring out the window at the darkening sky. Where is Raven, that girl? He swallowed the last few gulps. I know she stayed inside the city and just up the road, but a wounded shoulder. The sky had grown dark and the old man grew restless. He went to the window and looked out at the stars, the same memories from so long ago still haunting him. So many friends lost, he muttered. He felt a familiar, uncomfortable feeling come over him as he watched a red streak appear across the darkening sky. Not the first time he'd seen it lately. Not possible. He shook his head, willing the names of old friends lost a long time ago to leave him and threw up his hands. Never was good at waiting for much of anything. <coughs> he took his cap off the hook and adjusted it on his head, glancing at the sword hanging by the door, but deciding against it. Letting the night play tricks on me, just to walk down the road. The past does not predict the future, Albie. He glanced up at the sky again, but the streak was gone. Dead and gone. Simple as that. That is chapter nine. On to chapter 10. Um, Facebook has switched me over to a new kind of doing the video, so I can't see necessarily who's watching. To say, oh, I guess I can't. Hi, Mike. Oh, good. And yes, Lois is right behind me. And uh, I hope you all are enjoying it. We're on to chapter 10. The sound of crickets echoed across the Moss Dragon Ranch as William lit a lantern near the gate. You're not going to head back home yet. Yes, but I made my grandfather a promise. I'd get you to walk me if it got to be dark. He likes to be cautious. She shrugged and looked up at the night sky full of stars. The dragon's words came back to her and she breathed in the excitement that still hummed through her body. William walked down the perimeter of the property to light the next lantern. Wise grandfather, give me a few minutes and I'll be ready to go. Thank you for taking me on the ride. You must feel like this all the time, she said, grinning, pressing her hand to her belly. Her friend chuckled. Dragons can make you feel like anything is possible, but never forget, we train them for battle. They're magnificent and very deadly. She reached the next lantern. This one was much higher than the first two. Since you're here, you can help. Hang on to this for a second. He handed her the torch while he climbed up the pole. Okay, give it back. She passed the torch back to him, only able to lift it but so high with her other arm pinned to her side. He reached down and grabbed it. Raven was mesmerized, mesmerized by the dancing flame. Anyway, you have it lucky, William. Why is that? Look at this place. Complete freedom and independence. You get to do the job you want. You chose your destiny. And you're always around dragons. William laughed as he slid back down, holding the torch at arm's length as he landed. Two problems with that observation. One, I didn't choose it. It's the family business. I just happened to love it. You know, Raven, you only saw a little of what I do. It's not that glamorous. Training dragons is a pretty straightforward deal. My parents trust me because basically, I don't have a whole lot of room for rebellion and doing things my own way. There's really only one way to train these creatures with one outcome. That's actually the second problem. Why is that a problem? She glanced back at the glow of the line of torches that were already lit near the row of buildings. He stopped walking and turned to face her, a somber look apparent in the light from the torch. This job is torture sometimes. Why? What's wrong? She asked, taken aback. I played it cool when we visited the valley. Okay, right up until the dragons became your new besties. But I go there a lot because I feel guilty as hell. Because you had to clip their wings? He didn't want to say it out loud. Every time we breed a new dragon, I have high hopes for it. These big, beautiful animals, they're built to do so much. 
getting to see them move on to their new roles in the kingdom, that's the reward of being a dragon trainer. So when one of them won't take direction, you feel like you failed them. In a way, yeah, I know what awaits them. He took a deep breath and looked past her at the pasture, stretching out behind them, where most of the dragons were sleeping. If the valley is all that is left for such a beautiful beast, what's the point of them even existing? It's such a waste. His voice caught as he got out the words. There still has to be a reason, she said quietly. William continued walking to the next torch. Yeah, well, that's why I want you to train Leander. Raven stopped walking and nearly burst out laughing. You want what? You've got something, Raven. Yeah, school and chores. Let me just light this last one and then you can hear me out. I saw how you were around Teo. You know you want to. I know I want to, but there's more than a few people who won't let that happen. Once done with the last torch, he walked past her. Follow me. She hated saying the words. I'm supposed to be a mage in training. William's eyebrows shot up, wrinkling his forehead. That doesn't sound like you. You aren't getting scared, are you? Fearless warrior of small elves. Hey, he had a crossbow and arrow. See, you can do this and we can, we can what? They won't let it happen. We'll figure that part out. William led her to Leander's pen where the mighty beast was pacing around anxiously. He pointed to the dragon as he lifted the torch high to eliminate him. Look at this creature. This dragon is huge, powerful, and beautiful. He can be incredibly useful to the kingdom, right? Raven shook her head, a certainty. But he won't be because he won't listen to us. He won't even calm down when we're around, watch. William slowly approached the gate and Leander growled at him, blowing a small fireball into the air so bright that both of them squinted and flinched. Buzz off, fly boy. William backed away and turned to Raven. Now you go. I thought you liked me. It was about that time I bested you in archery. I gave you best two out of three. Just go up to the damn gate. And do what? Let him singe off my eyebrows? That would not be a good look at the academy. I don't train dragons. What am I supposed to do? Wave my arms, talk to him, tell him to roll over? Go up to the gate and look into his eyes. I have a good feeling about it. I know a special connection to dragons when I see one. Raven cautiously walked up to the gate and looked up at Leander, ready to duck if he blew another fireball. The dragon's eyes glowed with wavering intensity. He stared back at Raven, calmly snorting steam. Raven steadied her breathing, watching him expressionless. The dragon hunched over and extended his long neck out slowly to her. Raven held still, taking deep breaths and letting them out. William smiled. Just stay there. Don't move. He moved the torch around to get a better view. You are a natural. With a long, loud sniff, Leander inhaled the aroma coming off Raven. He closed his eyes and sniffed a few more times, his nostrils flaring wildly. What is that? Who are you? His voice was a low rumble that Raven could feel in her chest. Leander lifted his head till he was nose to nose with Raven. She stared back at him and he looked deep into her eyes. No snorting, no smoke, no fireball. You're more than a natural. The moment seemed to last a lifetime. Raven didn't know how to react or if she was supposed to do something. She didn't even know if the dragon was going to do anything to her. They just stood there staring into each other's eyes in complete silence. Finally, the dragon backed up in his pen and laid down in the far corner. Confused, Raven turned to William. Are we done? I think you are, William laughed. What the hell was that? That, my friend, was progress. What you just did in the last couple minutes is more than any of us on the ranch have done in our weeks with that dragon. But I didn't do anything, she held out her palms. I just stood there and felt this strange connection. She tapped her chest. Raven, the first step in training a dragon is establishing a comfort level. A mutual peace. You seem to do more than that. Nobody else has gotten Leander to do anything but hurl insults and fireballs. Yeah, I noticed, Flyboy. He's tired. Wait till you see him in the daylight. Swears as good as any. If I had done what you did back there, I'd be a charred corpse right now. You stood in the middle of wild, untrainable dragons, and they listened to you. You can do this. You're the only one who can train Leander. Raven didn't know whether to laugh at him or punch him in the face. But I'm not a dragon trainer. I'm a witch, or I'm going to be anyway. I don't have the time to train Leander. William stepped closer. Did you or did you not get upset at the thought of dragons having their wings clipped and sent to the valley? Yes, but, she stammered for a moment. When would I train him? I'm already in training myself to become a powerful witch. Raven, you are already powerful. I'm giving you the chance to try out your dream. 
and you can save a dragon from being banished to the valley. You can help him fulfill his destiny. You're always telling me about the day you'll lead people into battle to protect the kingdom and be the biggest ass kicker and blah, blah, blah. That was with spells and magic. You don't have to leave any of that behind. You can share your destiny with this dragon. He has a destiny too, and it's not to be clipped. You can help him fulfill his destiny and yours. Raven glanced over her shoulder at Leander sound asleep in his pen, his tail wrapped around his body as, he, as his back rose up and down with each long, heavy breath. I'll think about it. I promise I will. She looked up at the night sky and the stars. I have to get back home. We should get going. She walked past him toward the gate. William put one hand on his hip and stared back at the sleeping Leander. This isn't over. You chose her and she's going to be here for you, he muttered. He turned back and put his hand on Raven's back. Come on, we need to get you home. They walked quietly up the road, listening to the tree frogs and the crickets. Up ahead, two guards were at their post, passed out with an empty jar of moonshine lying between them. There you are, are you okay? Connor Alby was hurrying toward them, a sheen of sweat across his forehead. He glanced at the drunken guards and swore under his breath. Raven startled. Why are you still up? I'm fine, are you okay? Hello, sir, I'm sorry we scared you. William put out his hand to shake and Connor shook it distracted, glancing from side to side in the darkness. William held up the torch to cast a wider light, but saw nothing. Has something happened? No, nothing. I needed a walk and wanted to make sure Raven got home safely. The twinge of panic was passing and suddenly all he wanted was to be home with the door locked tightly behind them. Yeah, sorry. William had a lot of work to do and are you sure you're okay? He looked at her, shaking his head. With Isaac still missing, I got worried. Raven hugged him and felt a shiver go up his back. She stepped back, puzzled, studying his face. We need to get home. William, you get home too. Get inside. He was doing his best to let it go, to not let old signs mean anything new. Everyone needs their sleep, and Raven, you have to feed the goats in the morning before you head off to the academy. Raven squeezed his hand and looked back at William, mouthing the word, weird, a look of concern on her face. Thank you for tonight. William waved and said, come by when you can. She smiled and turned to go, trying to make sense of it all as her grandfather hurried them along, glancing behind them every so often as if he expected to see someone he knew. They got inside the cabin and Connor locked the door, resting his forehead against it for only a moment. You sure you're okay? Raven sunk into a chair, gently holding her wounded arm still in the sling. Yes, but your shoulder has seen better days. He hesitated, chewing on his bottom lip, and pondering the consequences of what he was about to say. What if I'm wrong, he muttered under his breath. What was that? Nothing. I need your help with something, and I have to trust that you'll tell no one. Raven's eyes widened with curiosity, and she got up, still cradling her injured right arm. Okay, now you have my attention. This is important, Raven. I have to be sure you can keep my confidence. Raven watched him closely as he came and sat down heavily in a chair opposite her. You look like you saw a ghost. Did word come about Isaac? You can tell me. I can take it. Let that go. It's not what I need to tell you. Focus. That will be vital if we were to pull it off. He got up suddenly and went toward his room. I need to get something. Raven rolled her eyes in frustration. If you're trying to draw out the suspense, it's working. Connor came back with a small book and held it open in his lap. Where'd that come from? Asked Raven, leaning forward to get a better look. I've never seen that one before. It was your mother's and her mother's before her. Look, I need you to say these words. Raven took the book from him, holding open the page and scanned the words. This is a very powerful healing spell. I don't have the skill level for it, not yet. I'll help you, he said, clearing his throat. What do you mean you'll help me? You haven't had any powers for my entire life, not since the... She hesitated, not wanting to poke at old wounds. Since the wars. Connor pressed his lips together and let out a deep breath. Things change. No way, that's great news. Raven's excitement grew and it felt as if a weight had lifted off her. Focus! He was practically shouting and quickly composed himself again. He leaned forward and said sternly, as sternly as he could to her, you must let no one know that my magic has returned. But why? I have my reasons. I want to be left alone. I hope to never have to raise my hand in battle again. It was too much. He waved his arm in frustration. Don't betray me. I would never. Now, take my hand and let the magic work with you. If it works, you'll feel a sudden surge. Don't fight it and don't stop the spell. Let it do the work. We are always just the host. 
Raven looked at her grandfather, waiting for more of an explanation. Connor grew impatient. You trust me, don't you, granddaughter? Of course, always. Then get on with it. We can do this together and heal your wound. Heck, osa, menta, unok, concilio. The long stream of words poured out of Raven as her eyes scanned the pages. She felt the magic move through her like a warm liquid, settling in her wounded shoulder and curling around, flowing down her arm and out the tips of her fingers. It was straining the muscles in her back and she wasn't sure she could hold on long enough when she felt the presence of something new. She glanced up from the book, surprised at her grandfather. His eyes were shut and he was whispering something unintelligible. Your magic, it really is back. Her eyes filled with tears as she repeated the spell, grunting and clenching her teeth as the bone in her shoulder began to repair itself. Raven squeezed his hand tighter, determined not to let go. When it was done, the book fell from her lap and she doubled over with a wave of nausea, finally letting go of her grandfather's hand. Why was that so hard? You've never had to manage that level of magic before. It takes some getting used to, and usually it's learned over time. Connor Albee let his voice trail off and sat back, his heart pounding from the effort. Try your shoulder, he said, his throat dry. Raven gently lifted her right arm, expecting a shot of pain at any moment. There was nothing but a mild soreness. It's amazing. She slipped her arm out of the sling and lifted it higher and higher, rotating it around, but still nothing. We did it, we did it, what a night. Connor shut his eyes and swallowed hard. Get to bed, you have school tomorrow. He suddenly opened his eyes and sat forward. And remember what I said, not a word to anyone. If anyone asks, you tell them it was a flesh wound and that was it. What about Deacon? I'll handle Deacon. Raven got up to go to her room. I promise, it's our secret, a flesh wound. She went down the hall but came back for a moment. You tell me if you needed my help, if there was something more, right? I just entrusted you with my greatest secret and asked for your help. That should answer your question. I suppose so. Just like your mother, always curious. Go to bed and get some rest so you can use that curiosity at school. Raven didn't say another word, but wondered as she walked away, what else is he hiding? She got to her room and sat on her bed, waving her right arm in circles, tapping her toes on the floor. She leaned over so she could look out the window and up at the stars. Best day ever. And that is chapter 10. Monday will be chapter 11 and 12. I hope everybody has a good weekend. And um, I hope you find some fun stuff to do. I am going to go sit from a proper distance um, in a parking garage for a few friends. Someone is turning 50, my friend Bonnie. So happy birthday, Bonnie. And um, we're going to socially distance, but still wish her a happy birthday. Hope you all have a great weekend. And I will see you back here Monday. And Lois and, Le and Leela say um, goodbye as well. And I love you. Keep sending me uh, notes. I will write you back and I will talk to you later.